Hello Mesa, here's another video featuring Permaculture Dan. The following is an educational permaculture video presented by Warner's Tree Surgery featuring Daniel Lee Thompson at his home food forest in Gilbert, Arizona sometime in April 2012. camera comes on. Okay, so this is Daniel Thompson. It is a permaculture food forest in Gilbert. And how this kind of got started was a bit of my, our own family background. My grandfather was the chief forester for the entire United States during World War II and had been a career forester his entire life. So he was able to impart to me visions of what it used to look like. And so I always had a curiosity as into uh, geology, natural sciences, and this sort of thing, and received tutoring from some of the finest brains in the world. Dr. Sherman Winger, in geology from the University of Albuquerque. I used to drive him around and run his camps, but he was like a walking litany of what went on here, yeah. geologically. Well, what we did in the last 500 years here um, is almost forgotten. That would be the fulfillment of, of Al Gore's um, The Inconvenient Truth. The tragedy right. is not losing something. The tragedy is forgetting that you even lost it in the first place. So how are you ever going to recover? Yeah, who would have known? Yeah, who would have known? Well, here's what the Southwest was like. First of all, ask yourself this question. What does Arizona mean? I don't know. The word Arizona. Where did it come from? Here it is. The Basques, who we now recognize as shepherds. Why? Because the Pyrenees, in where they're doing all their shepherding, they were foresters first. First, they totally dismantled the forest of the Pyrenees, and so these people, the Basques, knew how to work with wood. They became the traveling boat manufacturers for the entire Spanish Armada. The English had their guys, and the French had theirs, and the Dutch had theirs. But the Spanish were the, the Basques. Yeah. They were the woodworkers because they had the skills. So they disassembled their forests of Europe. They just built their ships, came over here. And, and now you had a moving ship industry on every coast. We had pristine coast in all of the Americas. Not one nasty thing going yeah. And wildlife rolling over in the millions and billions on itself in perfect harmony. In 1540, there were expeditions to explore the west coast of the Americas that made uh, some of the first maps. Diego was to go outside of all the land masses, and he discovered San Diego Harbor. That's a great story, I'll tell you that. But Alarcon was to go up the Gulf of California, seeking the Great River. The Great River was the Colorado. The land expeditions were coming up the San Pedro, which is one of the few rivers in the world that flows north. They know that it has to flow into the Pacific, yeah. and, and it does. It turns and turns through and hit, comes out and joins the Gila River, which empties out at Yuma. But Yuma in 1540 was, Alarcon sailed in and found this river delta. It took him two months of sailing in the river delta just to figure out which of these huge freshwater channels was the main channel. So he sailed up sailed. to Yuma. Yeah, sailed into the river delta and sailed the delta for two months to determine where the main river turned and went up so they could sail all the way to Bisbee. Okay, now where did he come from from the ocean to get... The to ocean was there. The Gila River emptied into the Gulf of California. All so, this dirt that is there now was not there. So he was able to sail from the Gulf of California, California. 
to Yuma. To Yuma. And you and he still did not find the Colorado River. The Colorado River, the Bill Williams River, the Gila River, three rivers in California, three rivers in Mexico, all were independent estuaries of the Gulf of California. Really? The Salton Sea is a finger peninsula uh, 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 bay that because of the erosion of the 11 western states by all of the military industrial complexes who owned the place, stripped it to bedrock, erased all of this, and this is what this result. This is what it was like in Arizona. Fully forested, we were the center of the grizzly bear zone. There were as many grizzly bears living south of us as there were living north of us. And it was Kutsnawu, which means Fortress of the Bear. 11,000 years ago, the Ice Age stopped just north of the Mugion Rim. That's why we have a Mugion Rim in the state of Arizona. Instead of, had the ice come farther south, we'd have Mugion Hills like North and South Dakota. Yeah. But the ice didn't do that. All the Colorado, Utah glaciated U-shaped valleys ended up here somewhere. In fact, it was the retreating ice shelf that relieved the weight that caused the Kaibab Plateau to rise and have the Colorado River cut the Grand Canyon. That's amazing. So, where, what was Arizona at that time? We were the edge of the Arctic. Now, the water systems, as land is exposed by the retreating ice, Biology immediately eats <laughs> what's exposed. The, the, the piece of grain that came off the bottom of the glacier flows for a while, but pretty soon it's trapped by nature. You know? And so that's a constant, constant, ever-enhancing equity, ever-enhancing rolling over biosystem on top of biosystem. This is what we did to it for 500 years, called civilization. We raped it, we took all of the timber, we took all of the minerals. In fact, all of this was called overburden by the mining companies. Overburden? We, yeah, it was, it, that's the technical term that they refer to it as. Strip all of this off, and this is yesterday, here in the state of Arizona. Yeah. So we're here, now wait. This is 500 years to go from this to this. It took Europe a thousand years to screw up their environment. It took us only 200 years here. So this was the state of being. The indigenous trout in the state of Arizona was the cutthroat trout, which is what? An Arctic char, first species south of a glacier. Where was the glacier? Just north of here. <laughs> now, ice retreats, the grizzly bear zone expands, and we were the overlapping zone between the tropical hardwood, ironwood, and then into the, the teaks and mahoganies and, and wyacon, and then the pine north northern plants. This was the overlap zone. This is where jaguars and grizzly bears overlapped here. So when Alarcon finally found the main channel, at the river delta of Yuma, he put two guys on shore and said, you're going to live on the island, and here's all the food. You don't worry about food. Here's the food. Here's your gun. Keep a fire going 24-7, a smoking fire during the day and little signal fires at night so that we know and can navigate where this is, and you're going to call it Camp Yuma. That's how Yuma's got to sleep on an island in the delta of the Gila River, well, dropping in. This video was made in Gilbert, Arizona. The person talking is Dan Thompson. Dan can be reached at 480-688-3335.